Hello and welcome to Rita's Test Kitchen. My name is Blake and today we're going to be making a shrimp cocktail and the sauce that goes with it, the shrimp cocktail sauce. Um, <clears throat> we have some shrimp here. This is uh, 1620 peeled the veined uh, shrimp and the 16 to 20 is basically telling you that there's about 16 to 20 of them per pound. So the more the number, the more small they are. Um, I usually go with 13 to 15. I like that that size. It's it's generally a little bit more beefier than this or meatier than this, I should say. So um, how we cook it, we put it in some water, a little bit of lime juice, bay leaf, and um, we'll bring it up slowly, kind of like a potato. What I do is I drop it in the water and then put it on there and let it come up until it's fully cooked, just, just till it's cooked. Um, and what that does is it helps with the tenderness of the shrimp. So um, you can leave them whole like this, or you can leave them plain like this. Um, I'm gonna show you one little technique that I use sometimes to just kind of give a little ooh-ah factor. I take the knife in and I slice it down like so. You can kind of see the blade is in there. Just enough. And then you can kind of tuck the tail down through. Bring it up like so. And it kind of creates a little stand. You, you can try to keep the fan open, but sometimes that just doesn't work like that. So I'm gonna place that in the water. I'm gonna do a few of these like so. This one has a really soft tail, so I don't even know if this is gonna be able to do it. Made it work. Golden. If you buy the shrimp with the shells on, which I'd normally do, um, unpeeled and undeveined, what that does is it gives me the freedom of being able to take the shrimp shells and making a shrimp stock out of it by simply just sauteing them with some vegetables, pouring some ice on top and letting it just go low and slow for about an hour and a half, um, maybe a little longer. But then you can make a shrimp bisque out of it or a shrimp stock um, or a shrimp soup of some sort is nice all right so I'm gonna cook some that way and the other ones we're just gonna kind of toss in there whether they got tails or not this shrimp in particular comes with some of the juice their IQF shrimp so they have some of the juices that were they came with going to take the lime just the top part of it just some of that in there I'm gonna drop the lime in there got a fresh bay leaf which I love fresh over dry and they're a little bit more I mean they're coming easier to get your hands on so I'm just gonna put it over here on the range medium to high heat because we want that water to come out quick enough but we also we don't want to kill it we don't want to hit it too hard because that will make the shrimp tougher so um, this is our other end of our lime here and we're gonna utilize that for some of the juices. While the shrimp's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and make our cocktail sauce. It starts out with ketchup. And I believe that you get what you pay for with ketchup. You, you know, stick with the uh, quality kind. We use some lime juice. That's the acid and that's important. We have two options here that I wanted to to, to give you a little bit of an option here. We can use horseradish, you can buy it prepared. We have root here, which I thought would be kind of fun. And then we have wasabi. And wasabi is a horseradish flavor. Um, and sometimes it comes in uh, powder form and you have to mix it with water. What I do is I mix it with warm water and cover it and let it kind of get really pungent. Um, otherwise it can come in a paste too, already pre-done. But we want horseradish flavor in this ketchup and lime juice mixture. Uh, you can do both, and that's what we're gonna do. We'll start with the horseradish. Um, you can peel it. Um, I'm gonna just use my knife here and try to go down the long way, kind of square it up a little bit. Take off four sides. And take off each corner. All 
Now, horseradish can be eaten raw. Um, you can shred it. You can finely dice it. Um, I don't have a shredder on me, so I'm going to actually just take long, thin strips. Put them together. And it's a fine dice. Just taking those strips and going across them. Oh, I one thing I like about fresh horseradish root is that, it, that just the tanginess of it can add so much depth to so many different things. I don't want to add too much because I don't want it to be too horseradishy. But I am the type that loves this kind of stuff, so I do add a lot as it is. So. Go ahead and give it a little stir. When I do um, cocktail sauce for events or parties, um, I'll either advertise it as a wasabi cocktail sauce or a fresh horseradish root cocktail sauce because when it's a wasabi cocktail sauce, you don't see the horseradish root or you don't see the horseradish in it. And when it's a horseradish sauce, then you can see the horseradish generally and that's what makes it. But if you look closely, you can see the color change from the, the wasabi and what it did. And I like that. I think that it adds a lot of depth and flavor. I got some fresh cilantro, which is kind of a, you know, different swing on it. And I did a rough chop. I'm just going to add that in there. That will now also be a garnish for our plate. Before serving it, you definitely want to try it. If you add too much horseradish or too much uh, wasabi, you can always add more ketchup and lime. It's pretty simple, simple ratio. So that's got great flavor. I love it. All right, over here on the range, I'm keeping an eye on this. Give it a little stir here and there. Once you start seeing steam, that's a good sign. You can shut it off. You can pull it off and let that residual heat continue to cook it. You pick it up, you can kind of see that it's still very delicate, but it's it's pretty much fully cooked. So, so our shrimp, as you can see it, what a really good test is it, that it kind of is springy um, and it bounces at you a little bit. You can tell that this is definitely cooked. And so, these ones, we did the fancy cut on, they cook a little bit faster actually because they've been split down the middle and water can get them between them. We'll drop them in some ice water, which we call ice bath. Stop the cooking process. Shrimp cocktail is served cold. If you purchase shrimp at the grocery market for a Friday night dinner and you do a little shrimp Alfredo and you've got some left over cook it off and you can have it as a shrimp cocktail and it will last you another you know five days or so before well I would get rid of it at least so we got our really nice homemade cocktail sauce with our horseradish root you can see in there shrimp is cooled down
All right, here's how I'm gonna cut this lime. Nice lime. Cut off the end, rotate it, cut off the other end. Try to square it up so it's nice and even. Straight down the middle. Down the middle again. Flip it up on its side. And cut out that little middle, uh, just that pith. Like so. Great. It's beautiful. I like the plate that it's on because it almost, you know, kind of appears like the ocean. Shrimp cocktail. It's petite. It's pretty small. It's kind of like a tapas plate. But we got a bunch of shrimp. And you could bulk that up. You could put it on an ice platter. If you were to put a ice platter down with a drain and the drain kind of drains into a bucket underneath the table or something, you put a layer of ice down, a little iodized salt on top, layer of ice again, iodized salt on top of that, and keep on mounding your ice up. And you can have a nice little ice platter, layer it with a bunch of ice, throw some lemons and limes around it, some bay leaves around it, um, kick it up a little bit, but shrimp cocktail, it's a classic, it's its uh, wonderful, and this one's kind of a spin on it, you know, I did the different cut, um, we still have our traditional cuts, which sometimes people put on the rim of martini glasses or margarita glasses, so, but I plated it, use some uh, fresh horseradish root, wasabi, cilantro, lime, voila, leave us some uh, comments and feedback, thank you for watching.